Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it and today's video is going to be about radiometric dating because every time I turned on my computer yesterday there was somebody questioning the validity of my video entitled The Fossil Record. At the time that I made the video I felt that I had said all that I needed to say but it's starting to look like I might need to say a little more. Normally, if I state an obvious fact that cannot be disputed I am done. I see no reason to go on and on about my personal beliefs on a fact or how I feel emotionally about my special fact because simple indisputable facts don't need to be backed by personal beliefs or emotions. Facts are pretty much standalone. That's why on my videos you'll usually see a lot of them thumbs down but only a few negative comments. People can hate facts but they pretty much know that there isn't any sense in disputing them no matter how much they may hate them. But when it comes to people's religious beliefs, it's a whole different story. Oftentimes, if someone wants to believe in something, no matter how improbable or even impossible, all of the facts in the world won't sway them to believe something different, and oftentimes they will say something. It's as if their God is giving them courage to stand up for what they believe in, no matter how foolish they may appear to others. What happened is this. Not long ago, I did a video called The Fossil Record, where in a very simple fashion that anyone could understand, I stated that it is wrong to call something a proven fact, when in fact it is really just a personal belief, and how it's also wrong to call something proof that at best is really only evidence, and especially when it's very questionable evidence. Remember what I just said. Once I state an obvious fact that cannot be disputed, I'm done. But in this case, even though the only negative comments that I have received on this are pure emotion and personal belief, the beliefs are based on propaganda with millions of dollars in backing by the networks, uncountable hours of public school indoctrination, as well as some very heavy peer pressure from members of the evolutionist faith. We're just human beings. It's often difficult for us to believe that that many resources could be devoted to something that is just a fabrication. Now, I'm not talking about evolution itself being a fabrication at this time. I'm talking about the fabrication of this incredibly expensive technology that is presented as proof of evolution. So here we go. When in a very few words I explain, explain the problems with radiocarbon dating, I was told that when dating dinosaur fossils, you don't use radiocarbon dating. You use radiometric dating, as if that was somehow better. Here's the reason that I didn't mention radiometric dating. If you go back and listen to my explanation as to why radiocarbon dating doesn't work, you could simply take each and every one of those reasons and increase them exponentially. Radiometric dating is nothing but a transparent scam that somehow people believe in. If you've never read The Emperor's New Clothes, I highly recommend that you go read that right now. Then come back and watch this video. The whole story of The Emperor's New Clothes could fit on one page and shouldn't take you more than five minutes to read. And be advised that this story is often used by evolutionists to show the foolishness of creation. But it really is about folks forcing themselves to believe in a thing simply because they want to fit in with their peer group. Back in the day, when radiocarbon dating was created, there were a lot of problems that were almost instantly exposed, mostly by people who worshipped the Creator. At that time, the oligarchs had yet to ban God's worshippers from purchasing degrees in any of the sciences. However, as time went by and the technology got more complex, new instruments were developed for measuring not only the radiation being emitted from geological specimens, but supposedly the amount and ratio of each isotope within a given specimen. Another important development that took place at this time was the policy change at our nation's so-called institutes of higher learning of not letting anyone purchase a degree in anything unless they first completed hundreds of hours of evolution indoctrination. That's right. To this day, if all you want to do with your life is teach high school English, you must first get certified as an evolutionist by some college. Never mind that evolution has nothing at all to do with speaking the English language. 
I think that most people don't question the technology that's used by evolutionists because they're under the impression that even the basic principles are too complex for mere mortals to understand. But that simply isn't the case. For debunking radiometric dating, all that anyone really needs to know is the basics, the very basic basics. And to be honest, those that study these things all their lives really don't know any more than what I'm about to tell you. So if you click on a video of one of them radiometric apologists throwing two chalkboards of scientific formulas in your face, just know that all he's trying to do is impress you with his superiority. There's a war going on right now, and the evolutionists have already lost. They know it, and all they can do is keep you confused why they buy some time till they can figure out their next move. Those formulas that they throw at you are nothing but a way of expressing in another language what I'm about to tell you in English. It'd be like a musician promising to show you how to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the violin and then just handing you a page of sheet music. If you remember high school science, then you probably remember the periodic table of elements. That is the chart of all the known elements that exist. The smallest particle that can still be called an element is an atom. Elements are things like hydrogen, tin, oxygen, and gold. When two elements form a bond, it's called a compound. Water is a compound that is formed when hydrogen and oxygen come together. The next thing that you need to know is that atoms are made up of even smaller particles such as electrons, neutrons, and protons. The way that we determine what kind of atom we have is by the number of protons it has. Carbon has six protons. So any atom that has six protons is always going to be carbon. It can't be anything else. If somehow a carbon atom were to lose one of its protons, it would no longer be carbon, but would be boron, because boron has five protons. Something that a lot of us don't remember about the periodic table of elements is that it is only a list of the stable isotopes of each element. What that means is that there are different forms of each element, so even though carbon will always have six protons, it can have any number of neutrons and electrons. In fact, if it has six neutrons, we call it carbon-12. If it has seven neutrons, we call it carbon-13. And if it has eight neutrons, we call it carbon-14. The reason that this number is so significant is because as long as an atom doesn't have too many particles trying to hold on to the proton, it's what's called a stable isotope. But the more particles that are attached to the proton, the more difficult it is for the atom to hold itself together. When atoms have too much stuff to hold on to, they tend to start coming apart. When particles fly off, that's what we call radiation. If an atom loses too much of its stuff, it can become a different isotope, as when carbon-14 becomes carbon-13. For some atoms on the high end of the scale, loss of particles can actually cause an atom to become a completely different element, as when uranium degrades all the way to the point where it becomes lead. This process can only happen over time, so the pay state pays insane amounts of money to evolutionists with college degrees to tell us how old things such as fossils are using the, the information that I just told you. Even though it is very obvious, there is absolutely no way that this is possible. Those that support this so-called science will tell you that without one of them degrees, you could never hope to understand the complexity of radiometric dating. But I'm telling you that you can. Evolutionists assert that we can determine the rate of decay of an atom by observation. This is possibly correct so I won't attempt to contest this assertion. Evolutionists also assert that the rate of decay of any particular element has been constant over the entire history of the universe. That may also be true. I cannot debate that since I have not been here for the entire time that the universe has been here. And for what little bit of time I have been here, I did not have the kind of instruments necessary to measure such a thing. However, Evolutionists have not been here for the entire existence of the universe either, and for what little bit of time they have been here, for the most part, they also did not have instruments for measuring such a thing. 
But here's where radiometric dating leaves the world of pseudoscience and becomes pure superstition. Evolutionists assert that by determining the precise ratio of the elements present in a specimen, they can backtrack to a time when all of the unstable isotopes converge into some kind of starting point that is acceptable to evolutionists, as if only certain elements would be readily available to whatever unknown material created the rock that we're trying to date. Remember, we got into this conversation by discussing the difference between facts and beliefs. Well, here are some facts for you. Fact number one. Scientists to date have no idea whatsoever of how fossils are formed. They can only speculate. Whatever they believe, it's not a fact, but only a belief. Or as they like to call their beliefs, a theory. They have never observed a fossil being formed, they have never been able to reproduce the process, and since all fossils are made up of different materials, they certainly can't claim to understand how every single fossil on the planet was created. Fact number two, they do not know if fossils form over billions of years or just in a few seconds. In other words, they don't know if all of the material entered in an instant or over billions of years, one atom at a time. Fact number three, they have no way of knowing how old each atom was at the time that it entered the specimen. Atoms of any age can exist in nature outside of the confines of a rock. Fact number four, each and every naturally occurring isotope of each and every naturally occurring element exists in nature. That's why they call them naturally occurring. Fact number five, it is known that much material leaves the fossil as it is forming. Scientists say that eventually the material becomes fixed. However, this is another one of them so-called theories, or as I like to call it, a belief, and one that has no support whatsoever. It is very unlikely that billions of years of being subjected to outside influences such as rainfall, ultraviolet radiation, wind and constantly changing temperatures would not be able to leach out a significantly large amount of whatever elements are in the fossil or even inject other elements into the fossil. Even evolutionists say that fossils change from sedimentary rock to ignatius rock over time. It would be pure fantasy to believe that this process could occur without bringing new material in or taking old material out. Fact number six. Fossils are made of rock. They're not made of radiometric isotopes. In fact, a typical rock does not contain much radioactive material or products of radioactive decay at all. Just so you know what I'm talking about. If an evolutionist wants to date the fossil of some kind of extinct animal, they will grind up a piece of uh, the fossil into a fine powder and then subject, subject it to test to determine its makeup. The vast majority of the sample piece cannot be dated. Only the radioactive parts, along with the pieces that they speculate, are the product of radioactive decay. In reality, all that evolutionists will be able to date when gathered together is usually much smaller than even a single grain of sand, as the rest of the fossil will be made up of pieces that are stable and do not decay. What kind of scientist could in good conscience say that a 40-ton fossil is 17 million years old just because he found an amount of material smaller than a grain of sand in the fossil that his machine says is 17 million years old? Furthermore, what kind of scientist would think that he could accurately tell you the age of a grain of sand in the first place? If the evolutionist that run these radiometric testing facilities could get consistent results from their test, I'd have to take a step back and reevaluate my belief system. But they don't. There are many different isotopes that exist in nature and are found in fossils. If a lab tests one isotope in a dinosaur bone and it tests out at 100 years old, they just simply use the results from an isotope that closer matches the specimen's assumed age. If uh, all the different isotopes that are used in the specimen don't produce the age they want, they simply state that the, I, that the uh, test cannot be performed. Whenever someone arrives 
at a numerical figure using known input of any kind, the process of doing so is called math. I believe in math. In fact, I use it every day as a means of staying out of debt, a feat that proves that I have math skills that are far superior to those of most evolutionists. However, when someone arrives at a numerical figure using known input combined with input that is based on assumptions, that is what's known as an educated guess, even if they're able to get consistent results from this method. Radiometric dating produces multiple numerical figures using input that is almost all assumptions combined with a very small amount of actual figures producing results that vary in range by millions of years. If, my, if I base my belief in a creator on such a thing, I'd be laughed at, and rightly so. If you believe in evolution just because you want to believe in evolution, I respect that. After all, most people that profess a belief in Jesus usually do so for the same reason. But if you even think for a minute that radiometric dating is reliable, you should really do some research. You might want to find you some different proof, or at least just fess up and admit that the reason you believe in evolution is because you want to believe in evolution. Evolutionists base all of their data on one assumption that absolutely must be a fact for even the most basic premise of radiometric dating to have any validity. That is the assumption that there is no creator, or at the very least, that the creator has to adhere to the rules of evolution. You see, in real life, the creator gets to make the universe out of anything that he feels like making it out of. But when universes create themselves, they pretty much have to create themselves exactly the way that scientists dictate. And by the way, the rules for how universes create themselves change pretty much on a daily basis. If, as an evolutionist, you base your faith on the geological column, well, we probably need to discuss that bit of proof as well. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.